Hey, look, I'm growing stuff, all kinds of stuff. Rows and rows of stuff here. It's fantastic. Uh, how, how are you doing this week? Uh, I'm Mark. Glad you could spend a little bit of time with me today. Uh, I've had a few requests for uh, an overview of uh, how the garden works, how it's set up, uh, all the kind of crazy crap. If you look uh, last year and you followed all the way through, you would probably be able to piece together all the different parts of uh, what's going on. But this will be like a comprehensive uh, overview of what uh, the garden's all about. Uh, I have a cheat sheet with me today because I didn't want to miss stuff and I knew that I would otherwise. Uh, some overall uh, thoughts about the garden. Uh, as you can see, three basically going to concentrate just on the hydroponic part of the garden, mind you. Uh, but we have three rows. Each row is 16 feet. There are um, uh, each row, two different sides, six buckets for tomatoes, six buckets per side, and they alternate back and forth. Um, uh, peppers, however, uh, eight peppers per side. So uh, total we have 48 uh, uh, and, and uh, two plants per site uh, uh, all the way around for peppers and tomatoes. And uh, so we have 48 tomato plants, 32 uh, pepper plants of various uh, varieties of both. Um, so 80 plants all together in the hydroponic structure. And uh, one of the nice things about uh, the setup is if I want to change this row to tomatoes and do all tomatoes, all I have to do is buy a couple of uh, chunks of 10 foot PVC for like, I don't know, 10 bucks. Uh, different hole spacing and you know I'm ready to go just like that and here's kind of the flow of uh, how the garden uh, works we get uh, water from the from the pump house uh, over to the garden and my water uh, just by itself has a ppm of 250 so um, which is kind of dirty I guess maybe I'm not sure but in order to not have to figure in that 250 for all my uh, settings and um, strengths down the road, I've set up a water filter. It's, uh, I think it's called a small boy. Fairly inexpensive little water filter. Um, problem last year though is I had some uh, algae grow inside the, uh, the filters. So this year I got a couple of little uh, cozies that go over the, uh, over the filters. So, and that seems to be working pretty well so far anyway. So after the water is filtered, it gets uh, sent to the two 55-gallon uh, drums. Um, they are hooked together at the base through this uh, with on-off switches for each barrel. Uh, I just let them fill evenly, the two uh, barrels. Uh, and I don't know if you can tell, but uh, the fact that they are in the shade and all the water reservoir um, and the nutrient reservoir, the water barrels are in the shade, that is no accident. That's actually when I decided that I probably could do this outdoor uh, hydroponics thing um, once I realized I could put the water supply in the shade and it would uh, stay a lot cooler that way. So the two barrels connect and uh, each one I can turn off individually and then that goes into the reservoir through a float valve as the water is consumed by the plants, uh, the barrels replenish the reservoir uh, up to, it's about a 20, 20 gallon uh, uh, reservoir of water in there. So the, the water level is always the same. Big thanks to, uh, I was gonna say Mean Shoes, but he's just Brock Hughes now, or, or Hydroponics Guy, I'm not sure. But uh, he's the one that gave me that idea. So inside the reservoir, um, you got the float valve that uh, regulates the water height. There's an air stone, my trimeter probes, and uh, the pump. I believe it is a 850 gallon per hour pump. Might be a little overkill, but um, it allows me to expand if I want to as well. I don't think I will, but just in case. From the reservoir, uh, it's a half inch feed line that goes to each of the three rows. Uh, each of the three rows has uh, a shutoff valve, so I can turn off one row if I want to, or two rows, or all the rows, or whatever. 
That runs into a, a two gallon per hour regulator, the little flag uh, regulator, flag emitters. And that goes to a quarter inch feed line and each line has a drip stake that uh, sends the water down into the uh, Dutch bucket itself. Now I'm using the official uh, Beto bucket Dutch buckets. Um, I had not seen Brock Hughes's uh, videos or MHP Gardener where they explain how to make your own Beto buckets or Dutch buckets. Um, so I ended up th with this route. I kind of like it. Uh, it's nice. They're they're built to uh, to fit right over the inch and a half PVC for the return. Uh, it's kind of nice. Uh, for the the buckets that have the the small regular perlite, I am using paint strainers to uh, prevent clogging of uh, of the return lines and into my pump and uh, styrofoam covers. These little styrofoam covers fit real nice on the Beto buckets. They're made for them actually, um, and that prevents a lot of the rain from getting in. Uh, as far as the being outdoors without a greenhouse to cover it up. And then the water, uh, the nutrient solution return is uh, the half, one and a half inch PVC. Uh, now normally uh, you would have just a single PVC line as your return and you would uh, face the Beto buckets toward each other on each side. Uh, but because I have these, uh, the big four by fours in here, it makes it a little difficult or actually impossible uh, to put the uh, the PVC return down the middle, so I have each row or each side of the row has its own PVC return. It all goes back to the reservoir where there's a removable downspout, and I use that. I can take it off when I go to change newts. Easier to get to, to the reservoir. And right next to the reservoir, I have my my dry tote. I call it. Uh, I keep my electrical in there. There's the um, power strip. I have my trimeter guts in there. Um, I also have the air pump and storage uh, for various things. I keep the equipment I use for reservoir changes in there. Uh, makes it so I don't have to run back and forth into the house all the time. And speaking of nutrient solution, I mix my nutrients in five gallon jugs. Uh, that I keep uh, in the house in sort of a darker area. Uh, it's a pretty uh, opaque jug, but um, still don't want them out in the sun or out in the hot or the light or anything like that. Now each row of the garden is uh, at an angle. Everything flows uh, to the north, higher on the one end than it is on the other, so all the Nutrient solution uh, comes back in the inch and a half PVC and flows back down into the reservoir really nicely. Um, I've got a half inch conduit that I've used all the way down uh, as a return that also at a little bit steeper of an angle because I want the nutrient solution that might be stuck in the, uh, the black feed line I want that to, when I turn the pump off, to go back down and go back into the reservoir. I don't want that sitting here cooking, so the next time it goes to, to do a feed, you get boiling hot water in the buckets. That would not be good. And then at the top, um, I've got the two by four that I'm using to put my bobbins on. Um, and then that, those connect down to the benches where I've got eye hooks uh, and I do a little, uh, top line hitch there at the bottom to keep those tight and uh, it does a really nice job keeping those straight. And just for the record, you know, not all of this was uh, my idea, <laughs> obviously. I've watched a lot of other people's videos and checked out how they've done it. MHP Gardener, Brock Hughes, uh, the uh, hydroponics, no, uh, what is it called? How to Hydroponics. He was one of the first ones I watched. Um, Definitely helps to watch a lot of other people's videos and get some great ideas. Yeah. So that's kind of the overview of what I got going on. Uh, it worked out really well last year. There were some small issues that I, I hope I can fix this year or have fixed this year. So anyway, uh, enough of me babbling on about the system. That's what we got going. Oh, quick look. Uh, I do have some raised beds back there uh, that are dirt. You know, what can I say? 
I uh, thought I'd give it a shot. Um, and I'll do a separate video on that some other time. So until next time, see ya.